I love fountain pens. I'm intrigued by the unique character and personality of fountain pens. The thoughtfulness when considering what the writing experience should be for the wielder of the pen. The design, the innovation, the eloquent simplicity, the clever filling systems and precious metals, fascinated by their function and utility. I have so much respect for the makers, from the entrenched giants to new upstarts forging a new legacy. I value the diverse philosophy and approach between the different manufacturers from shore to shore. From steel to gold, there's something for every hand. Ink stained hands, naturally. What they represent to the thinkers, writers, doodlers, and designers. The ideas people, the playful and the precise planning obsessed and collection crazy. I'm preoccupied by the times when a fountain pen in every book bag, purse, and briefcase was as ubiquitous as smartphones are today. I'm careful not to revel in this euphoric recall. You see, humans, we are quite capable of selectively evoking the past as being better than it actually was, especially when the present feels less good. And what about longing for a time that you never actually experienced? It is nostalgia for the days when you were too young to have lived it. According to Ann Wilson, a professor of psychology at Wolford Laurier University, we reconstruct what happened in the past on the basis of little bits and pieces of memory. We're acting like archaeologists, picking up the pieces and putting them back together. I'm guilty sometimes of elevating the past, forgetting the more important areas where progress was slow. There is a common misconception that memories are accurate records of the past pristinely preserved in our mental filing cabinet. Dr. Philippe de Brigard, associate professor in the departments of psychology and neuroscience at Duke University says, memory isn't just there to help us remember where the car is parked. It also plays other roles. And one of them is to help us feel better Handwriting challenges my psyche in a manner that is unmatched. Putting pen to paper to process is not replicable by machine, not in a way that feels as good. Much of what I write is centered around what I think and how I feel about the things I read and watch. In these moments, I allow myself to examine not only my thoughts on the nature of the story or subject in a linear way, but also to stem one thread into multiple branches of topics and entries that eventually form on paper. Doodles and nonsense, bits of information I want to retain and recall, curiosities to explore and stories to craft. Humanity's ideas of love and power can make us blur the lines between what we know to be true and what we believe to be true. What happens when what we know isn't worth holding in our internal memory anymore? Isn't it more efficient to offload our facts, history, and decision-making to AI? Some look at the rise of GPTs and artificial intelligence as a new opportunity to unlock breakthroughs in areas that could benefit millions. 
researchers have predicted that language systems fueled by generative AI bots will take over all content creation on the internet in the not so far off future. The AI evangelists would have us all thinking we must act now to take advantage of this virtual land grab while it's ripe for the taking. Some of them sound more like carnival barkers or artful dodgers with the pitches. Others call it hustle GPT. Productivity has never felt so liberating and tiresome. Yet, here I sit with a pen, forming one character at a time, slow, deliberate lines that have no chance of keeping up with the pace of my racing mind. The point isn't to move fast in these moments. Slow is fast. Something I really value when it comes to handwriting is the way information seems to embed itself in my brain. Despite the advantages that technology brings, writing by hand has no equal when it comes to ideation. Generating fast, low quality content just doesn't have any appeal to me nor does consuming it. Particularly when the equation for generating all of this content is moving away from the creators themselves in terms of compensation, recognition, and dignity. Now, I'm certainly not anti-technology. I'm using a fair amount of it here to produce this video and upload it to this platform. I see tremendous value in expanding access to information through computing. But, as Charlie Munger says, you can't really know anything if you just remember isolated facts and try and bang them back. If the facts don't hang together on a latticework of theory, you don't have them in a useful form. Offloading that scaffolding or the understanding of why that scaffolding is important in the first place seems dangerous. Handwriting helps me to reinforce that scaffolding of my ideas while having fun doing it. Writing encourages creativity, exploration, and expression. The only limits are a dry nib. We are experiencing a period of rapid change, hurtling towards a future that's equally exhilarating and terrifying all at once. Sometimes, progress is holding on to things that are obsolete for the simple fact that they make us feel good. They bring out the best in us and our kind. Remind us of great things we were able to achieve with less. It's okay to use a tool that won't scale for the enjoyment or sentimentality of said tool. Sometimes new is not better. It's just different. It isn't lost on me how peak first world problem this is to even be contemplating. Yet the intersection between technology, our idyllic pursuits, and collective civic responsibility is most central and rudimentary to our very nature, purpose, and existence. I'm reading a great book by David White called uh, Consolations. In the chapter Hiding, he writes, we live in a time of the dissected soul, the immediate disclosure, our thoughts, imaginings, and longings exposed to the light too much, too early, 
and too often our best qualities squeezed too soon into a world already awash with ideas that oppress our sense of self and our sense of others. Hiding is an act of freedom from the misunderstanding of others, especially in the enclosing world of oppressive secret government and private entities attempting to name us, to anticipate us, to leave us with no place to hide and grow in ways unmanaged by a creeping necessity for absolute naming, absolute tracking, and absolute control. Hiding is a bid for independence from others, from mistaken ideas we have about ourselves, from an oppressive and mistaken wish to keep us completely safe, completely ministered to, and therefore completely managed. Hiding is creative, necessary and beautiful subversive of outside interference and control. Hiding leaves life to itself to become more of itself. Hiding is the radical independence necessary for our emergence into the light of a proper human future. <laughs>